evening. Greetings all over the globe. Yeah, I think we can start. Thanks for coming. What a nice idea to come together, practice a meta meditation. <clears throat> Always good to keep up the meta spirit. And we will do a guided meditation right now for about 40 minutes. And then I have a 10 minutes break. And after that, we can have just a casual exchange of thought about the meditation and meta practice in general. All right, shall we start? Let us start our meditation by bringing the focus of our attention to the in and out breathing of the body. Allowing the mind to gently get away from worldly concerns thoughts about the realm of sense impressions. Just relaxingly, directly experience the in and out breathing of our body No need for narrowed down focus at some point of our body. Quite to the contrary. We allow awareness to spread throughout the body with the help of this sensation of our breath. We keep up this preliminary exercise of relaxingly focusing on the breath. We already establish first hint of a friendly understanding attitude. 
thoughts, all selves, as human beings, all selves as the meditators right in this moment. We can be kind to ourselves without fulfilling any standards of perfection. While we gently continue to redirect our attention into the body, onto the breath. spending some time um, with the breath in the body. We create a vessel for mindfully placed mental states. So that this body Filled with awareness comes something like an echo chamber. For the meta tensions, we now uh, carefully start to place in our mind, formulate in our mind. Addressing at first ourselves as a living being consists as all living beings of a, a, an experience process in body and mind, in permanent flux of experience uh, assets. and create understanding, patience, the foundation for benevolent, caring and understanding attitude that only wishes well and peace to ourselves. may try to put this uh, caring intention in the form of a sentence. Allow the intention, the beauty, the meaning of this thought to um, show its effects in your body. May this being 
be at peace. This being, meaning ourselves, be at peace. One small detail you may try to be aware of. Don't focus all your intention on the pleasantness of the feeling that might or might not arise in this meditation. Rather focus your intention on the purity and beauty of the intention of the metta wish that you formulate in your mind over and over again. That way we can avoid the mind being dissatisfied with the feeling intensity. Our only job is to remember the beauty of a genuinely experienced meta intention. When we embrace ourselves, is this one little thought made this being? Be at peace.
and we slowly open our awareness, the presence of other beings, maybe physically around us, also the our co-meditators here in this little Zoom meeting. Beings like ourselves, whose lives follow the same patterns of experience, bodily and mental processes, and might be actually much more similar to our own than we usually are willing to realize. Now we can try to recognize ourselves in each and every of these fellow beings. Create a connection, caring interest. Creating an attitude of benevolence and kindness. Wishing those beings the same thing we wish so dearly ourselves. Let the echo of our verbalized meta intention spread throughout our bodies. Reach into the space we share with our fellow beings. May these beings be at peace.
we can gradually increase the subtlety, the beauty of our meta intentions and contemplating about that peace, that inner peace of non-grasping, of non-identification. We wish upon our surrounding beings In our meta practice and everything we know and we learned already in the Dhamma together. To create this beautiful meta wish. That peaceful, quiet state of ungrasping freedom, ignorance and all its pains. May these beings be at peace. While still relying, the body-based mindfulness, we now venture to expand our metta to all beings who share this one big space with us, beings we know, beings we might never encounter, Beings we like or dislike, removing all areas, removing all reasoning for or against our fellow beings. From the firm foundation, of our body-based mindfulness. We include all living beings in our meta intention. We 
allowing this caring, kind attitude become universally valid. May all beings be at peace. Finally, we can contemplate the meaning of a being, nothing but um, any given constellation of mental and bodily factors of experience within ourselves or others. In this meta spirit, we also and create confidence and altruistic joy for all beings. Insight that all beings 
or life situations can potentially be liberated by wisdom, the wisdom of non-identification, letting go of any I and mind making. In this sense, can create a refuge for our mind in this vision of peace is not dependent on any particular set of experience factors. Peace that solely relies on an attitude that has come on the same level as reality, so to speak, reality of impermanence, reality of letting go of identifications. So regarding any life situation we might face or any other being might face, have this beautiful intention, beautiful attitude of confidence and kindness. May all beings be at peace. Thank you for joining in with um, our meditation and in 10 minutes we will continue with an exchange of thought and hope to see you. And now I'm um, curious to hear your thoughts on the meditation we just practiced or on the value uh, meta practice has in your life and in your uh, dhamma on your dhamma path in general and we'll see i'll go <laughs> um hello. hello yeah i really liked uh liked this your your version of this it using these using words has always felt a little cumbersome to me. Um, so when I when I have done the metta practice, I've used the radiation. But sometimes I really need something to hold on to, and these they just felt very authentic. Like I wasn't fighting against the I or all these words. So uh, mm -hmm. I just felt a lightness, and and it just felt really really good and i love kind of paying attention to the beauty of it and the 
the pleasant mm -hmm. Vedana was really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. That uh, this this focus on on the beauty is actually not uh, my own idea, but it's uh, a part of what the Buddha says about uh, the meta meditation. We get this in one uh, very interesting sutta, the, the Metta Bhavana Sutta. And the Buddha talks about the, the pinnacle of each of these uh, four Brahma Viharas. And the pinnacle of uh, Metta practice is um, the liberation of mind by beauty. This is the uh, Subha Chetu Vimuti. That's uh, the, a term that's used for metta, sometimes also for other meditation practices like the kasina meditations, which are not so uh, frequently mentioned in the suttas, but uh, sometimes, and there's also about the focusing on the beauty of a particular color we use as a meditation image. And here, uh, focusing on the beauty of this uh, metta intention, mm -hmm. which I found uh, very helpful as as a um, additional information when we start out to practice meta, because I found it uh, to be uh, quite a problematic thing when the mind starts to run after the pleasantness of the experience and just tries to get more of the pleasantness, and then sometimes we get into this mode of trying to get more of this pleasantness and it's almost like i always had this 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 inner picture of i have a like a, a, a tube of uh, toothpaste and i try to squeeze out as much as possible and like that we try we want to squeeze our heart to get more of this uh, juicy tasty meta stuff and um, over all this uh, excitement about the pleasantness of the experience we sometimes forget about the wholesomeness of the experience yeah. which is actually much more important than the the enjoyment part of it is the the this uh, healthy reorientation of our attitude towards ourselves and other beings so it's uh, very interesting that they put a the Buddha puts it that way that um, there's um, it has a lot to do with uh, perceiving the beauty of this uh, this mindset and uh, that's something we can also easily bring up in our mind again and again it's it's difficult to just um, order ourselves to have a particular feeling and if we try it, it easily feels like uh, strained or, or cons construed or something like that. Isn't but we can always uh, um, try to have the um, most genuine meta intention we can bring up in the moment. And then see, really, I mean, um, I can hardly contain my enthusiasm. Um, could there be any any thought a human being could have more beautiful than may all beings be at peace it's such a beautiful thing that human beings can think such a thought maybe we are so used to meta meditation that sometimes we forget how extraordinary it is to to wish well to all beings it's such a wonderful thing that we human beings are capable of thinking that even yes yeah, did you have something? Well, something that all that also was really wonderful about it, the way that you led it is wishing ourselves and others peace. And you know, it's a, it's it's so a lot of the other meta practice that we've been exposed to, where you wish beings to be happy, to be healthy, to be free from danger, things like that. A lot of those things seem very conditional and you know, it's not always, you can wish that, but yet it's not always possible. But what was so profound about this is, as the way that you led it is you're pointing out that 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 we can actually, the, the peace can be independent of circumstances um, and, and needs to be. And you were talking about you, as you guided us, you guided us through that, that process of letting go and um, the possibility of discovering peace in every moment. And that was really profound for for me anyway so thank you mm -hmm. yeah um mm -hmm. i'm glad you liked it and 
it's one of my basic um, convictions that all all the different parts and aspects of the Dhamma, they have to match. And sometimes we get the feeling this doesn't match with that. that we, we, we should contemplate the impermanence of things or the unattractiveness of the body. And how can that ever be um, compatible to uh, having meta? And uh, so, uh, so easily we can fall into this misunderstanding. So if there's the the sunny side of the Dhamma and the dark side of the Dhamma, and how can we bring those ever together? But there are no two sides of the Dhamma. It's all about creating peace. So it's all beautiful and and um, meaningful, uh, but uh, serves different purposes, right? And so I find it especially interesting and very uh, beneficial for our practice to to use metta and also the other Brahma Viharas. We had no time to to practice today, but we also are also highly recommendable. To use those, we, we might call it the emotional ambassadors of, of the Dhamma and infuse them with some uh, depth of Dhamma-inspired wisdom um, in order to reach deeper levels of our being, if you want to call it like that. So we get more, we also get an em emotion, we get emotionally convinced of the beauty of the peace the Dhamma might offer, which at other times, the path towards that peace is not always just um, accompanied by beauty and roses and smiles. Sometimes it's about seeing the complete uh, unsatisfactoriness of everything, but still there can be uh, a, prof a more profound beauty in that than we might just see on the surface. So I think it's very, it's, uh, extremely beneficial to bring these Brahma Viharas into our practice in order to, in this, in this particular instance, to create an, also a new attitude towards uh, the peace of letting go and relinquishment, to start uh, associating it um, with something kind and beautiful. And on the other way around, or the other way, uh, also developing matter in a way um, that allows for insight to also see this uh, pleasant experience in a in the light of the Dhamma and not creating a new illusion out of it and saying oh, this is my uh, this is this feels so nice this I, I want this to be in my new self and um, then we start to cling to that and, and get all the dukkha that's uh, created uh, once we start clinging. Mm. There's actually, in, in that very same sutta I, I mentioned before, also a, a mention of pairing our metta practice with the seven bochangas, with the uh, awakening factors. Um, and if we pair those together, which basically means we don't fall into this trap of identifying with these emotional echoes, but rather always trying to guide it towards more, more calm and more equanimity and uh, less identification. Um, then we can also uh, use the meta experience as a gateway to. Um, experience of what the Buddha calls the Arya Iddi, those um, the noble powers, I think you would translate it, um, which is nothing but a kind of flexibility in our mode of perceiving things. You might have come across this, uh, this, this five-fold noble powers of perceiving the repulsive and the non-repulsive and perceiving the non-repulsive and the repulsive and perceiving the non-repulsive and the repulsive and the repulsive and perceiving the non-repulsive and the repulsive and the non-repulsive and doing away with the with the cognition of repulsive and non-repulsive and uh, directing the mind towards uh, equanimity. So 
Um, and I, uh, for my own private use, I coined the term of, of um, um, perception flexibility on that. Um, and that's actually what also can develop when we continue to practice meta under this uh, under the light of the awakening factors, which are not um, always aiming towards the next um, ecstatic experience of the pleasantness, but rather always guiding it towards uh, uh, calm waters and uh, uh, this uh, equanimity mind, which is so uh, essential towards uh, the, for awakening. And um, basically, when we when we do a meta session, our perception changes changes about ourselves and others. So maybe something we find repulsive uh, appears in a non-repulsive or even beautiful light. But it doesn't mean that this new beautiful light is the absolute truth, and we should just cling to it. But uh, we are using this uh, the shift of our perception wisely as in just another object of of insight we can um, learn non-identification by seeing that uh, none of those two uh, perception modes are absolute reality it depends on conditions putting in the condition of a meta perspective uh, everyone appears to be a beautiful and lovable being and uh, uh, replacing that meta attitude with uh, the hindrance of ill will and everyone seems to be ugly and uh, hateable and uh, despisable and honestly the one the first mentioned is much more beneficial because uh, it's free from the hindrance of ill will but both of them are perceptions both of them are uh, perceptions uh, conditioned by other factors and neither the result nor the, the cause um, has anything to do with the uh, permanent uh, or um, self-sustaining self. So using the meta practice wisely, we can also learn a lot about the impermanence of those um, identities we usually um think to be so worth clinging to and then maybe see it in a new light that I, I am not the angry person and I am not the meta person it's just uh, causes arising uh, and cause uh, and and results arising and other causes passing and uh, those results passing please <laughs> hello um I was I thought it was interesting that as I was thinking of an intention of peace, as opposed to say an energy of meta, right, which would be normally how I would perceive meta as an energy that's going out. Um, so the intention, um, I've I noticed that there was lots of thoughts that came up that contradicted that intention, <laughs> and I thought that was interesting because if it had been uh, an energy of meta. I have a feeling it's like that would almost anesthetize my mind and stop those thoughts from coming up. And so I thought it was more honest because it was like, oh, these thoughts are coming up that are contradicting my intention. Mm -hmm. I was curious mm -hmm. how you would guide me to approach those thoughts they came up. Do I acknowledge them? Do I just say those are thoughts? How would I approach them? Mm. Well, um, at the at, at the very end of our meditation, I hinted a little bit at it. At um, we we can redefine this one term we use uh, in our meditation thought, mm, mm -hmm. the term being, from mm -hmm. the general understanding we have. A being is this one person sitting here, and another being is the person sitting over there, and mm -hmm. um, change that uh, definition to a being is every moment of our experience and of, of other mm. people's experience. So we have mm. this kind of type, uh, ourselves consisting of tiny, tiny beings in a uh, succession of coming and going, right? right? And then um, each uh, thought that comes up is not a disturbance or distraction, but uh, just another object for our meta yeah 
right? If oh, we good. if if we again again it might um have something to do with our uh, the result we focus on. If if we if we try to achieve or if we frame our idea of the ideal result as being a certain samadhi state that is per definition free from all distracting thoughts and very blissful and this and this and that, um, then uh, and this uh, subtle um, greed for a pleasant experience invites uh, aversion if we don't achieve that pleasant experience. That's that that's, that comes on the back seat, uh, traveling along with uh, the desire for the pleasantness, right? But so if we shift our focus from uh, wanting to get the pleasantness towards wanting to have the the genuine, real, pure intention, mm -hmm. uh, it it's not a problem any longer that we have intrusive thoughts. They are just mm -hmm. another, uh, maybe even a welcome object for our meta training yeah and, that sounds that's helpful and the and the the pleasant states will follow that's not a problem mm -hmm. um <laughs> funny funny to say it's not a problem because usually that's what we really want to get out of it but um they actually can become a problem if we get um if it um, if the pleasantness of the state intoxicates us to a level that we forget the genuine um, um, meaning that created it. Right? And let's imagine a scenario where you sit uh, in your room and have this beautiful meta meditation and then someone opens the door and comes in and says, oh, hello, I'm back home. <laughs> and if we get angry about that, then maybe we were our meta was misplaced, or our attention wasn't on the genuity of the meta and was rather on the in, indulging the pleasant uh, reverberations of the, the meta itself. So and maybe that can also uh, clarify your point that I wouldn't say meta is an energy we radiate. Uh, Meta is that uh, state of mind, and it can create a certain energy or feeling or whatever we want to call it. But I personally found it always uh, difficult and also, to be honest, it's quite stressful mm -hmm. since I might have staying in di different monasteries and uh, also be, uh, I'm through a lot of guided meta meditations on this point of my life. And <laughs> um, one thing that always stressed me out if people rush into uh, now you have this meta energy and now you have to do this with it and that and is, there's this golden light and it has to shoot in all directions of the cosmos and uh, I was panicking <laughs> because the golden light was a bit too slow in it, it's the rising and um, so it's a pity if we associate uh, meta with stress and or or, or having to achieve this um, impressive states of universal conquering and <laughs> it's, it can be it can be such a can be such a, a subtle and and humble experience very quiet experience just mm -hmm. uh, the, realizing that this human body mind uh, construct is capable of creating this uh, beautiful, wholesome uh, intention. Start getting hung up in it and um, just creating a new self out of it. It's, I mean, in a way, it's we, we can hardly avoid to have some type of identification with the matter. Of, of experience, but that's already better than um, identifying with the hatred self that is uh, against the whole world. So it's like, like an interim state of trying to um, lure our um, identification drive into a more wholesome direction. And at the same time, being careful not to 
um, repeat the same mistakes that we do in our daily life when in dealing with um, sense pleasures um, here again. Yeah. This uh, um, flexibility of perception is also something that I find very interesting in this connection. Um, um, seeing the, the non-repulsive and the repulsive, that's, I guess, obvious with, uh, with meta, but it can also be the opposite that we see some small things, um, I don't know how to put it rightly, dis disturb us maybe, so to say, or arouse our attention that usually go unchecked. Maybe we just say as a slightly cutting remark to someone and usually we wouldn't even care. Uh, but now suddenly we realize, oh, there's the intention behind that wasn't really very beautiful, was it? So we can, um, our perception shifts also in, in such ways that we we can see things afresh. Just because right now, mindfully, of course, uh, but we have that experience that our way of perceiving can change given some parameters of our experience are changed. We change the intention from kind of uh, just per chance, whatever comes intention is the ruling intention to uh, fixing our intention on one particular uh, mindset that we choose and that creates a new outlook. And then all of a sudden we realize uh, Wow, our, our outlook is always um, dependent on on causes. It's not depend, and none of those causes it depends on is a permanent self. Because of, uh, in a, in a self experiment, we we might realize we can't just wish to be full of matter, but we get, by taking care of. Uh, an environment where this intention of meta can spread its effect evenly. That's why we spend a fair amount of our meditation in preparation, just by creating this uh, uh, mindfulness framework in the body. To have like, I like to think of it like a, a vase or a vessel, or I don't know the English term when you when you have a guitar, then the body of the guitar is like an a chamber for the sound waves to, to enhance the sound waves and echo chamber. So our body uh, functions in the same way to magnify or to, to hold whatever effect this uh, wholesome intention creates. But if we don't build up all these necessary uh, steps and necessary causes for it to arise, then it will not arise. So we see it's a conditioned phenomenon, which doesn't mean that it is not helpful and it is it's worthwhile um, building it up again and again. We can't just wish to fall into the unconditioned by one thought and everything disappears. It's a process of uh, re and deconditioning ourselves. May I just ask a question that brings in the Brahma Viharas? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, how does metta relate to upekka? Like, how does, what's the connection? How, mm. how would I think of them together? Mm. Well, um, the first approach would be um, over these steps of the other Brahma Viharas. There's something like a logical buildup. So there's an indirect connection over these uh, other two steps that uh, with this, uh, the caring and uh, benevolence of metta, we open up to the, the dukkha within ourselves and other beings. And with mudita, we realize that uh, just similar to what I uh, mixed in at the end of the meditation, we, we realize there's a non dukkha is a possibility. And the way I like to see it is that um, the reason why there is 
a possibility for non-dukkha in every situation is because there is no permanent self as a carrier of dukkha. Mm. Right? So uh, whenever we allow this self-construct to fall apart, the suffering disappears. Right. And that's already our reason for uh, Upekka, to realize the the non-selfness of our experience and the experience of others. So we can um, we can stop to try and manipulate an existing self into a permanently lessened state of experience, which we usually try to do with with ourselves, and then we blame ourselves. Why are you not able to? Why you you should always be happy, and why why are you not more uh, engaged in this uh, work to be permanently happy? Or we blame others. So why are you not constantly happy? And I I wish you had a better self. Then I would. I could love you better or more easily, right? So this aspect of self is uh, um, detrimental to the Opeka state and also has a, a strong connection to the meta, top, meta theme because um, especially that, that one uh, meta quality of um, recognizing ourselves in others, which uh, opens this gateway to uh, benevolence uh, uh, for ourselves equally uh, for others and vice versa, that the price, if you want to uh, phrase it like that, the, the price for uh, ultimate recognition in others is to let go of the notion of a self. If we all had permanent and individual selves, we would be different from each other. Right? But since we all are, we are all made of the same stuff, so to say, just some body and some mental phenomena, and that's uh, that's it for everyone. So when we can recognize, we we can see the own. Um, process of experience in others by reflection. Well, one could even go so far as to say wh whenever there arises the feeling, this I and mine feeling, that uh, uh, unawakened, unawakened beings all have this feeling that the, this experience is always my experience and I am the one who, who experiences it. And since this I um, phenomenon is created by the same causes in all beings, you can conclude that it must feel the same for everyone. Maybe the maybe the, the details are different, right? Like uh, someone is happy and someone is sad and someone is young and someone is old and a man or a woman or this or that. This, this ingredients can differ, but the, the thing that is created by the deluded mind, this feeling of I am this, I am this person who experiences this different experience uh, objects, that must always be the same. So I can really um, see my own I am feeling in you and in everyone. And that creates, on the one hand, according to our uh, needs in meditation, that's why it's beautiful uh, that the Buddha calls it the noble powers, because we can shift according to the needs, how the mind is, uh, what the mind is up to, what the, mo the moods of the mind are, that's always changing and uh, not always the way we would prefer it in our meditation. But when we see, oh, the mind might need some Upeka and calm and uh, disengagement, then we focus on the sobering aspect of anatta, the voidness behind this anatta. And if we, if we need more this uh, connected, warm feeling of, uh, of, of kindness, uh, we focus on the um, recognizing ability that's given to us by anatta. 
Yeah, I mean, that's just one way to, to see it, I'm sure. There are many connections between uh, these uh, Brahma Viharas and all these uh, wonderful Dhamma states. So maybe one glimpse uh, has to be enough for now, since I uh, <laughs> realized just now that our time is almost up. So I would like to use the last few seconds to thank you for joining in with this um, experimental evening in an unusual language. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing it about and inviting some of your friends. And <laughs> I hope you all had a nice Dhamma evening and I wish you all the best on continuing your path towards this inner peace we all try to find within our minds. Nice to meet all of you. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye-bye.